I was just making a point when my brother did not accept that I should speak because he thought I was interjecting him. You well, remember you were, in 26? No, he mentioned my name and I just wanted to draw his attention mm. to the fact that... He didn't mention your name derogatorily. He just no, made a reference I, I say to you. he did? No. But I'm saying that, that once, he, once you make to a interject. reference, with, with, you with, call, with, me, with into, truthfulness. You call me into a conversation. And the conversation was that, you remember in 2016, when we were campaigning all across, even in front of your own, just here, flag, the Flagstaff House, Kennedy Jipon said the grass was even suffering from water. It wasn't only that electricity Ghanaians were suffering from water. I don't understand. Water. That same Kennedy Jipon during grass, the campaign the also grass, said I'm that Dr. Mahmoud oh, Obama, you, leading the you economic management team, or had filled the country. Are you interjecting me or you want me to talk? Okay, please go ahead. Thank go you ahead, very much. Ahead, if you are doing a debate with me, then I can also come on a debate with you. But if you want me I'm to speak... I'm not doing a debate Yes, you are asking me questions and I speak. So give me the chance to speak. Please go Thank ahead. Thank you. Go ahead. The grass in front of Jubilee House was brown. He said they were even suffering from malnutrition, water. That a president at that time sat in front of Jubilee House and could not even give grass water to grow. But today, look at the place. When I was coming, I was looking at the frontage and I said, this is beautiful. It, it gives you the impression, the image that we want to create as a country, that we are going on the right trajectory, even with all the challenges we are facing. So my brother should not go there when we are talking about people who cannot manage and people who we know from Adam that they are very, very corrupt and they, 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 they are misleading this country into a place that we shouldn't have gone and they want to come back for it. Please, let's not go there. Dr. Baumia on Sunday met the youth of this country across the country. Every region was involved. Um, if you are watching, you could see that um, they mentioned from greater accra right down through the northern to upper east upper west central region my own region western western north and um, bono bono east and um, ashanti volta oti everybody was involved they were listening to wisdom they wanted to hear the man of the moment they wanted to hear the man who is taking them into the next gen z generation someone who understands and appreciates that digitalization is part of growing an economy it's not that digitalization is separate from economy it's not someone who will come and stand there and insult but someone who will come and stand there and tell you what he has to offer with humility with acceptance that yes we started very well there came challenges and when the challenges came, what did we do? We moved and made sure that we did not sleep and say that, oh, ya yeni ina ya bre inti ya mayen saso. But he worked hard to make sure that he would not be called a magician as someone was asking for. That I'm not a magician to create jobs. But he worked hard to make sure that we created over 2 million jobs. He mentioned them. And he gave the various sectors that the jobs have been created. He gave the various pointers that we have done and have improved upon. Let me start with the educational system. Since uh, we started the SHS and the TVET enrollment, it has increased, the enrollment has increased by 83%. Every year, senior high school, over 600,000 children who, have, who would have been dropouts are now have been enrolled since 2017. And it tells you that we are building the next generation. Because the most important thing you can do for any, any uh, what do you call it, any society, is to make sure that you educate the people. If you don't have the right education for them, if you don't do the right things, or if you don't care about the education, what, what you're going to do is that you are going to grow a base where people don't know their uh, ways and their, what they are going to do. And then they just sit down and go into any other venture. Because the Bible even tells us, I mean, when, you, when there's the weak or slow minds, they sit down and they do whatever they want to do. But once you have made your mind that, listen, Rain or shine, I, I am going to work, invest. Uh, the, the devil, the devil find, finds work for the for idle hands. hands. Yeah, it's the same like, mm. like interpreted. Mm. But when you educate people, at least they have a basic future that they can work upon. Education became free. Even when people were marching on the streets and telling us that it was a 419 scam. Even when the presidential candidate of a party, the president at that time, was telling Ghanaians that we cannot um, do free SHS on the whisker caprices of a desperate politician. We took it upon ourselves. That no matter what, if that is the last thing we have to do to make sure that we educate over 600,000 children more in the former position This position was that it should be done incrementally. What is incrementally? Roland, what is incrementally? It says building When 600,000 children 
would have been staying at home every year, multiplied by the eight years, over 600,000 children would have been at home. Don't know what they have to do. And you tell me that, oh, let's do it incrementally. Incrementally how? When we did this um, uh, free education, you remember before we took power, BEC, children were whipped and were sent home that if you don't come and pay your fees, if you don't come and pay for the BEC, you cannot sit for exams. Today, we don't hear that. Under the presidency of Nana Kufado and Dr. Bomi, we don't hear that people are being sent home just for the fees or the BEC that they have to pay for because certain measures have been put in place. When people were being um, taught even how to answer past questions, what were they saying? They said they were being lazy. When they came out with flying colors across West Africa, they were telling us that eh, these um, children are what? They are, they are stealing in exams. They are being copycats. They are, they are not being taught the right thing. And the, this thing, exams are this thing. They are, being, they, are, they are stealing for them, actually, more or less. Telling the children who had suffered, some people who had bent the midnight oil to learn and get to that stage and get good um, grades that they were lazy and they were being taught nothing. You see, so it tells you the type of leadership as against the one currently looking at making sure that education is a key and is a must. Then you move to the STEM that you talked about, science, technology, uh, engineering, engineering, and, and mathematics. mathematics. You know STEM is free. Whilst others are putting it in their manifesto that they are going to make STEM free, they don't know that STEM was, is even free. It tells you that they don't even read to appreciate what is happening in the country. It tells you that they are not ready to say because they want to do things on their own whims and caprices. And when you go and say, they will tell you that you are stupid. It doesn't matter. Let us be stupid, but we'll be stupid in helping that child. We'll be stupid in educating that child. We'll be stupid in making sure that that child will not sit at home, but will get good education and come out with flying colors. Like the guy who um, we sent outside to continue his education, and he's flying out over there in, 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 in super colors. He's showing that even when you go outside, you can make it with distinction but not by someone who is sitting there and thinking that you are cheating in exams or you are stealing or they are marking for, for and on, on your behalf. So I will tell you, um, Roland, that whether they like it or not, the money we've spent on education so far is enormous. In STEM alone, Dr. Bamiya has said that he's going to increase the funding in um, science, technology, education. engineering, mm. and mathematics education because it, we've seen that as paramount. It helps. The basics, the basics should be very solid. If the foundation is solid, the rest will be easy to go upon. And so we are not going to rest. We are not going to sit down and watch anyone do or say or do what they want to do. At the end of the day, if you are able to do this and do it well, as you are giving them the free STEM education, as you are giving them the free TVET, TVET is another place that we've invested a lot. And people don't know that TVET is free. A lot of people don't know that uh, the technical vocational educational training that you are giving today is free. So they are saying that, oh, when you come, we'll make TVET free. But people are getting TVET for free as we speak today. So if you finish your SHS and maybe you want to go and do some vocational things, you can go and learn and you'll be supported to start your own business. That is the thinking of the bold solutions that you are looking forward to the future of this country. We are looking to make sure that that young man over there, that young girl over there, that young child, will not fall short because maybe the parents died, because maybe the parent hasn't got money, because maybe the parent could not do certain things right for him or her, but they will be able to stand on their feet and go to school and finish and come out and start their own business. That is the education we need to give to every child. And we will not rest on our earths to make sure that every child will have the best education that is needed. I'll call on Ghanaians, I'll plead with them that those who have enjoyed the free education, those whose children have enjoyed it, the children who have enjoyed it, they should let others too enjoy it. Because when you tell me that you are going to reset to when you were in power and you don't even recognize what your predecessor did for you, but you claim all the projects in your name and you come and tell me that you are resetting, which means that you are going to tell us that free education is 419. So you are going to reset it. It's only up to Ghanaians. When to did decide. they say that? Oh, that when they free say education they is 419. You haven't seen the free education for one. I'm asking you a specific did question, Mr. Alfred Thompson. You didn't see you, the over 80 adverts they did that free education was a hoax. 
So Ghanaians should not believe Please, you, in the you free education. You made a submission that they yeah. said free education was 419. And we all know play, the position. I can play the video we for all you. We all know the, the position. But I can send it to you so that you play for everyone. Please, we all see. know the position mm -hmm. of the former president mm -hmm. and then his government. Was that free education at the, at the secondary school level should be, should be incrementally done? In 2016? Go and check when they were I'm marching. saying that we all know. It's, it's public knowledge. Yes, so I am so telling you, it is I am telling you that I have the video of when they were even going for a, a, a match and they were marching that free education, 419, free education, 419. They were telling us that they would not do free education on the des for, for a desperate politician. And so if I'm telling you today that they said they are going to reset this country to when they were in power, all they are telling us is that that free education, that over 600,000 children that are now in the formal educational sector should be scrapped. And it's up to Ghanaians to decide whether they want this or they want that old system where even water and electricity was a problem. I am glad you've seen that a lot has been done. I'll just take two or three minutes to respond to certain untruths that have been peddled by my dear brother here. He talked about Kodio Sheldon, eh? The same Kojo Sheldon who told Ghanaians that he was paid to come and ask certain questions under Mohammed's uh, just the media media. That's why he didn't go. And this same Kojo Sheldon has come to our uh, media encounter or youth encounter with um, His Excellency the Vice President. But he wasn't paid. That's why he came. And he asked questions. And there were a series of questions that were asked. So if you come and sit here, and you lie through your teeth and tell us that, oh, the but questions that were asked... said that he, he was paid to come said what? to the, by, the, the youth he said events. What? He said that he was called. Mm -hmm. And that he was giving questions to come and ask. So is that paid? He was giving questions so to come and paid? ask. I'm, I'm only say? saying that he, di he didn't he say that he was paid. paid. Okay, so let's take the paid out. What ah, about the questions? A lie. What about the questions? Ah. That he said he was giving questions. Ah. Did he say it or not? Yeah, Tom Bede that they that. gave him he questions that, yeah. to come and ask. He's and he said he wasn't going to do it. He wasn't going I, to do it. I do you know, see, I do know when, that it's on public report. Yes, that Giorgio Pariado came to deny. Oh, did any, he? Yes, he did. That they didn't it, give it's him It's a matter of public record. So, so this is the same question. This is the same person they said that he asked questions. And you see, if you don't know how to deal with series of questions, when they give you series of questions, you don't decide that, oh, because he talked about this topic, you, have, you are going to propagate that topic to another that's the question that was asked. That is not how it works. When you are giving series of questions, they'll give you about five to ten questions. So you take them one after another, you write them down, and take them one after another and respond to them. So what he was saying that, oh, and he was asked about uh, this, the youth employment, and was talking about land. I, 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 seriously, let's get serious. Let's get serious. He is not a presidential candidate who, when you point fingers at him, that maybe the economy has even got... Because I'm if coming. insults come, I, I don't know how I can contain it. Please, I'm let's, not going to, I'm let, not going to let's insult be anyone. Very, let's be no, very I'm not going to insult. in our language. I'm so not that, going to insult. So that we don't set a Listen. tone. So that we don't Roland, set a tone that Roland, becomes Roland, the position of pointer for backlash. You sat here and you backlash. watched him Please. call Baumia a liar. Please. I have Go never ahead. called his candidate. You, you call John Mahama an incompetent person. But he's and, incompetent. And, okay, great. So please he's go. He's incompetent. On. So please and go. And I'm on. proving it to you so that he's on. incompetent. And I'm saying so that let let's use language. Roland. Mr. Alfred Thompson, I'm let's not use insulting him. No, please. Let's use when language. When he was calling people stupid, nobody said anything. Please. Please, when let's use language the, on this uh, platform. What do you call it? The John Mahama has not spoken. Former, uh, John Mahama has not spoken when, on this platform. When the former, uh, what do you Mr. call it? Alfred Thompson. Former, uh, Mr. Alfred uh, Thompson. Mr. Alfred Thompson. Mr. Alfred Thompson, please. Let's lay. Has Baumia spoken on this lay, platform? Let's has, lay. Has let's Dr. Alaji Ma Baumia spoken on this platform? Let's lay a good platform. foundation for this. Roland, the, the, you can't the, be doing this. The, no, please. You I'm not doing anything. What you want no, to please. hear this, and what you don't want to this hear. This is a media When I talk platform, about the grass, we have that you didn't an, get water. We have and he was saying things that I didn't see. Policy. You kept quiet and you watched. And, I was expecting and to ask you And if John Mahama is on a campaign platform, mm -hmm. that is not a representation of the editorial policy of media general. And mm -hmm. let's be very specific about that. So I say, let's lay a ground rule. And I'm saying, and so I am far, not going to insult So far, we have, we, have, we have adhered to the rules. I'm saying that let's be decorous in our language in such a way that our audiences will listen to us. Mr. Alfred Thompson, so, continue. Thank you very much. I am saying that when you have a former president, you say anything about him and he tells you, as he told Martin Amedu, that he was stupid to call him GO1. And then on Baumier's own, he calls him a stupidity to say you are not going to talk about the economy. It tells you the type of leadership 
we are looking. We are he looking didn't at. call Dr. Oh, Mahmoud Dubaumia. You don't need to mention this, yes. that Dr. So Bonya he made a scenario about the Clinton administration oh, campaign. Please. Roland, can you stop rhetoric. this? And then can you that, please no, stop please, this? Let's, let's, no. When let's he was be, speaking and he was right. saying a lot please, of please, um, please, untruths, please, please. you kept quiet and watched him. Please, you, even when things please, are you can, said here, you can say many things here. outside no. this platform. But I'm saying, even when I talked about I'm the grass, he said that is the idea of the MP. We have a presidential correspondent as well as others who cover the Roland, various I don't presidential think you are candidates. Being fair in I'm, this I'm being very fair. No, you are not. So, Mr. Alfred I'll tell Thompson, you, you don't debate me on what I'm I am saying. Not debating let the audience you. decide I on what they want to hear. have you. So, let please, the audience please. decide. I am saying what you are doing, you are just far, taking our time off. I, 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 as far as I'm concerned, the former president did not insult Dr. Mahmoud Dubamia or call him When the you tell someone stupid, him. It's he stupidity made, that you are not going to rhetoric talk rhetoric about the economy. You think it's not, it's not a... Campaign are we in a Clinton campaign message. here? Are we in a Clinton okay, campaign please here? please continue. Or we are in a Ghanaian please campaign? Please continue. Are we going to vote for Mr. Bill Clinton? Mr. continue. Let, let's be serious, please. Continue, continue. Now, we are talking about jobs. If you get the government of Nana Kufado in the health sector, apart from the schools that we've built all across this country, in the health sector, hospitals and clinics and healthcare infrastructure started and completed by Nanado, including IPEP clinics, are 111 up to 47. It tells you that when doctors finish, when nurses finish, they'll get jobs to do. He talked about nurses' placement. Nurses' placement from 2012 to 2016, what did they do? What was their record? When we took over, we had to take more than three or four years of placement and make sure that we have placed them in good positions or good um, institutions for them to work. We didn't complain because it was part of the package. When they told us that we'll see how we even get fuel to run our systems, we went all out and made sure that we got them. Then you come to projects that were started by Kufo, but was never touched for the last eight years or the, um, the eight years within NDC. There are nine of them, right from Ghan East Municipal Hospital to the Salaga District Hospital. We have completed all of them, and they are running. Then you go to hospitals, clinics, and healthcare infrastructure started by the Kufado led government, but yet to be completed. There are 12 of them, including IPPs, there are 17 of them. As for the Agenda 111, there are 111 hospitals that are being built. I can show you the book, don't worry. You are, see, you are spying. You, you can mention as many as you want. <laughs> I can show you. When you finish, you can look at them. Then we talk about health well, hospitals well, well, and healthcare well, well, well. projects no, please, started by NDC mm. and completed by MP. There are 17 of them. Mm. 17. Mm. We didn't leave them abandoned. Mm. Like they left the Kufo projects abandoned. And all these hospital projects, all these healthcare infrastructure, you get people working there. There are the number of people who go there and work there. There are jobs being created. We don't throw jobs away. It's not jobs that you say that, oh, we cannot find them. You find them doing the health people talking about it. I remember we had a meeting with some of the doctors and they were saying that we showed them all the projects and said, wow, we've done all this and we don't even sell our message. But we are focused on making sure that we deliver rather than going there and printing books that we create images that were not even possible in those times. That is not what we are looking at. We are looking at making sure that when you go to maybe somewhere like Awoma, you will see the project over there. You will see the project. And I'll give you the soft copy. You can go to everything. Let your cameraman go from district to district, from region to region, and check on all these projects. They are there. Feely, feely. Nobody is hiding them. We are not doing images and put it in our book and come and tell you that, oh, these projects are things that we are doing. So when we are talking about building and about empowering people, when you are talking about policies that even under the vice president, and I'm glad my brother here said that, oh, apart from the government collective responsibility, we have individual responsibilities. And that is why we keep on asking. You said Dr. Baumia cannot debate Mahama. Agreed. Because when he has been able to under the vice presidential distance slot, he's done 33 projects initiated, 33 individual ideas and policies that is helping to build and develop Ghana. And under yours, what we could remember was that the president called on a white paper on you so that we investigate the Airbus scandal 
and other scandals that you've committed. It tells you that this guy has nothing to offer. We won't run away from our responsibilities. We won't shake anything off. What we'll tell you, yes, we stand there and we always say that even in our government there were challenges. We are still facing challenges and we will overcome them one after another. But what we will do is, is that we are mandate to the Ghanaians, we will honor it and we'll make sure each and every citizen will get what is due them.